We're about to study page 84. I know that some of you are in a waiting because we are behind several the themes, several pages, and uh, we'll catch it. Catch it up. Uh, as you know, war muzzle tov to uh, Dr. and Mrs. Brownstein and the Jack and Sarah Schmerling. Um, I just came back from Orlando, a little overwhelmed between flying back from Israel, you know, just a couple of days ago, 12 hours, and then the following day flying to Orlando. And last night I officiated the wedding at the uh, World of Astoria in Orlando. Unbelievable, beautiful, beautiful wedding. It's a uh, heartwarming to see how Daniel and Jennifer make the effort to make the everything glad kosher, and uh, it was a heartwarming to see a uh, two Jewish souls in one heart getting there. And I personally, with all the flights involved in the past two weeks, so we are a little bit beyond. Anyway, <coughs> we'll catch up. Catch up. <laughs> Eighty-four. This page dealing with uh, first part Ilchotuma and Tara, we're just com going in Mitzvah to complete Ilchotuma and Tara, and then times allow we go to the second part of the page, which is the Ilchot Kilaim. Kilaim is a mixture of a uh, vegetations while they are planted, and is a certain halachot involved with that. Amar Rava, top of the page eighty-four. ולחנניה טלטול על ידי שברים שמי טלטול There is a, a dispute between חנניה and the rabbis the, the big question is when you have a, let's say, wagon and the wagon carried, let's say, a corpse so the, the rabbis hold as long as he's not filled up it's an issue of uh, transferring the impurity. Hananiah, however, said that that doesn't need to be an, a conditional. If you remember, we talked in the previous session about Sfinata Yarden, about a Jordan sheep, and the idea is as a small one. The key is if it can be carried by, by oxes, several oxen can carry it, or it carried by a, a person. So Hanania said, since we talk about Sfinaha Mitaltelet, about a Jordan ship, and therefore when it's full, it receives this state of ritual impurity. Why? So he said, did none. He said, Tiltul, Alidei Shvarim, Shmei Tiltul. Because since it can be carried by oxen, so that's considering a carrying. So because this type of ship is a large one and can be carried only by oxen, therefore it's considering as something that a um, ship that can be carried from one location to another, and therefore it can be a recipient of, um, of tuma, of impurity. For those who were not so familiar, we, we brought the Mishnah that said on Yam, the whole issue that that uh, that a ship by itself cannot accept an impurity. So even you have a corpse in that boat, it makes no difference because it's the same way as a, a, a dead body within the water. You considering a, the water pure, even there is a dead body there. So in that sense, we juxtapose both. So now we bring a proof to that. The Gemara said, in Ditnan, this is a famous Mishnah tractate Kelim, 24b, that said as follows. Shalosh Agalot Hen. There are uh, three categories of distinguished types of wagon. Number one, Asuya Ketkatedra, that a wagon that is built like a chair, which means that it's short and it's circled from all these three different locations. 
So yes, there is a difference between Rashi and the and the Rosh in explanation of that. Rashi hold that in this, uh, three different sides, the uh, and that's basically the Rambam t- uh, in the Pirusha Mishnayot hold that way. However, the Rosh said that um, only if it's molich mi makom le makom, if it's carried from one location to another. But that's the first one. So he said, Tmea Midras. Midras is a general category for any type of ritual impurity. It can be standing, sitting, lying, etc. It's all considering Midras. Why? Here it's because um, it used for sitting and because this type of wagon Rashi said it's for people to carry from one location to another so because it's designated for people to sit and they have the um, the body weight on that so it's capable to be a in Tumat Midras which is the general statement for impurity of Zav Next, kemita, if the wagon is like a, a bed, which means that it's a large in one side, and the bottom, it looks like a leather bed. So Rashi said that it was, a, it was made like a large box, that it's open on the top part, and, the, and the, it was a, that's the use it in, do, in those days to carry um, 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 different l- uh, luggages, etc. From, from uh, different, uh, uh, they loaded it uh, with things, with carrying from one location to another. So he said, "Tmeat memet." It's capable uh, that if a dead body attached to that, or if it's uh, under the same roof with a dead body. So it's it can be in our language contaminated, can accepted a ritual impurity. So that apply also to other type of impurity, like a dead animal, excluding midras. So now we said because the designation was to put a different merchandise on that. So there is a concept, if you remember, we study the one who sit there, they said, stand, and we will do our work. It's called in Hebrew, Amod ve'na'ase melachteinu. So therefore, it's not under the category of Tum'at Midras, because when you're talking about Tum'at Midras, the din, the law, it's only vessel that use for a person to, to use it as a support, like something used for sitting or sleeping, that is something that's capable to be in under the category of Midras. But any other utensils or, or, or something that used for other purposes, it will not be under the category of Midras because this is not annul the, the main designation because you always can say Amod stand and we will do what we have to do. So because this type of wagon was designated to carry um, a different um, materials loaded and unloaded, so one who sit there, he basically abrogated the the key use and it's not under the category of midras. Now, shel avanim tehora miklu. If the wagon was made out of stone, so it cannot take any type of impurity because the bottom. Rabbi Nuchanel said that the bottom of that wagon. It was made in that uh, um, uh, uh, materials that they have the very bottom uh, holes, and because those holes um, are large, so this wagon it's uh, considering as a, a vessel, and it's not accepting any tumat um, uh, maga uh, attachment of impurity. 
because here is the idea any type of wooden vessel that they have a hole in the size of pomegranate so as long as uh, that size of pomegranate meaning that average mid-side person can pass by that it's not considering a vessel now Ve'amara Yochanan in regards to a wagon made out of stones Ve'im yesh ba beit kibul t'me'at memet he said that if the stone wagon there is a receptacle for pomegranates which means the hole are not large enough for a pomegranate to fall through so what? it's considering a utensil and can become impure and with impurity that come from a dead body now just as a side note I want to show you some applications when I was a rabbi in New Jersey you know I was five years rabbi of shul in New Jersey was a large part of the shul were um, survivor of the Shoah um, Holocaust people went through Holocaust so unfortunately in those years I officiated endless funerals I can say in five years I exceeded more than 100 funerals so from time to time it was the issues with family members that um, wanted things that not follow properly the traditional Judaism one of the thing is those funeral homes using um, you know when the family come there and they in a stage of agony and they propose the family with different deal or a different list of options um, one of them is the idea to use a coffin so you can use a wooden basic coffin that costs just for the sake of understanding let's say five hundred dollars and you can use something that costs five thousand dollars or more if it's made out of a special wood made out of um, of a uh, iron uh, carrying sides mm. maybe some pieces of gold cover etc etc the halakha issue is that the only coffin that made out of pure wood the simple one is properly kosher by halakha furthermore one of the issues that I have with those families and the funeral home is beside of the issue of the caring part that has to be made out of wood with all the state of impurity it was another issue is that that the wooden part on the very bottom they have holes mm -hmm. versus the fancy one that doesn't have so I disapprove it and from time to time I have a big to do with the family I always said look you can choose another rabbi and it never happened but I have a certain policy when it's come to these things. Why is that? The Torah tells us that they, I'm just giving you as a side note, the Torah said that um, a, a man came from dust and King Solomon tells us that uh, it returned to dust. Mm -hmm. So in other words, and now a little bit Kabbalah, part of the process for the soul to be departed from the body is the expedition of the bone to be part of the dust in Israel for the example natural decomposition process correct the natural correct. decomposition process excellent David so the point is in Israel they don't use in coffee mm -hmm. they just bury us with the shroud right. and goodbye here because of state law etc they're using coffee so those coffin has to have by halakha a hole on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the process <clears throat> should take place properly while the body needs to return to dust properly. But back here to our subject, you see when it's come to acceptance of ritual impurity that Rabbi Yochanan said that if they have a Beit Kibul, if they have this part of acceptance in the size of pomegranates so if an average person can go to that 
then it's one category. And now we learn something from the tractate Kelim. They said as follows. Shalosh Teivot Hen. There are three types of uh, chests in order to accept impurity. One, Teivash Shepitcha Mitzida Tmea Midras. A chest that opens from the side on which one can sit or lie because it can be used for sitting it can become ritually impure with what? Tme'aba Midras Why? With impurity imparted by treating if the Zav sit on this if it's someone who's a discharge sitting it and you cannot say to him Amod stand and we'll do what we have to do because that uh, that's the using for lying is not contradicted Rashi said the the core needs which is that um, to carry the person and therefore it's acceptance of Tumat Midras remember Tumat Midras it's included everything all the different positions Mile Mala if the chest that opens on the top so it can be the um, with impurity that parted by a dead body. And the one, the chest that come in a very large side. So it means can they hold more than 40 CA, which is a large one that is a 60 CA in a dry way that Habab Midah meaning that is a, such a large quantity that you need to measure the, the both the, the length, the side, both side in order to know exactly how much is it or how far is it so he said in that sense the Ohrami it remains ritually pure and does not become impure for any type of impurity. Why? Because the top part is not used for lying. So, therefore, it's not part of Tumat Midras. So what we see here? We see from the point of, of this measurement that because of the size, it's not accepting the ritual impurity so now, why the Mishnah, when the Mishnah uh, will bring a list of different wagons, is not speaking about this large wagon. So it has to be that the reason, because that all these halachot, when it's come to this wagon, they, they, because they can be carried from one location to another, um, and you derive also what Rabbi Yochanan said that even a wagon that made out of stones apply also to a large wagon that it's not carried only by oxen but um, so it means that carrying by an oxen it's also considering carrying Tanu Rabanan now we bring a brighter that dealing with this Fina Midras kli cheres taho An earthware vessel is ritually pure which means if you have a zav that seat on that earthware vessel it does not touch the inside the seat it does not become impure Okay? Rabbi Yossi omer afas fina Rabbi Yossi said even the status of a ship My kama so, you mean to say that Rabbi Yossi here hold that, that the ship is, is not becoming pure for Midras, like, like the same as, a, um, as a, any type of porcelain vessel or, or earthware vessel, etc. So, Amar Rav Zvid, Rav Zvid explained and he said, Amar, Midras kli cheres taho umagao tame he said that the, the earthware vessel 
is ritually pure. On the contrary, if the Zav touches the vessel, it becomes impure. And an earth worship can become impure with impurity imparted by the, by the treating of a Zav. That's the opinion of Rabbi Hanania. Kehanania. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Af, which means, according to Hanania, that's all that, that the sheep is not accepting impurity because we compare, we do the hekesh to mm -hmm. the sack. So therefore, an earthware boat that is not compared to a sack, so it accepted the ritual impurity. Rav Yossi Omer Av Sfina Torah, even an earthware boat is, is pure. Ketana Didan. It's like our Tana in a Mishnah that since we use the word a Oniya Belevyam, a boat in the middle of the water, so that included an earthware boat. So it's not accepting impurity. Mat Kifla of Papa. Of Papa asked of Zvib, My Af. So why you use the word also in addition? What is the, the, uh, the, the meaning of even? He said, because the, the first Tana, the Tana Kama, did not make a pure earthware only from Tumat Midras. And Rabbi Yossi purified the boat also from attachment for any type of Tumat Maga. So why use even boat? Ela Marav Papa Hacheke Amar. That's the meaning. Midras Kli Cheres Taho. He said that the Brita hold that an earthware vessel is ritually pure. And when he's talking about contact to Maga, oh, Tame. When it's a contact with a source of ritual impurity, it is. So if it touch an earth where it's impure. Veshel etz, but if it touch a wood, ben midraso uven magaot tamer. Regardless if it's a midras or a touch, touch, it's impure. Usfinat ayarden, and a Jordan sheep, even it's made out of wood, teora, it's pure. So that basically um, what he hold here, that Ketana Didan, which means an Jordan sheep is ritually pure in according to the opinion of the Tana of our Mishnah. So Rabbi Yossi Omer, Rabbi Yossi add to that, and he said, Af Sfina, he hold that even the boat is impure, Tmea, which means like other wooden vessels, and that's basically the same as opinion of Hanania. Umidras. Now we need to understand a little bit. Um, I want to um, give just a word of explanation to make sure that we all understand it. When you have a zav, when you have a person that have a discharge, so any position can be dores, step, yoshev, sitting, shochev. It is a line on an earthware the earth will not become impure. Why? Because the Torah tells us, if you remember when we talk in Alachot of the Kashrut, for example, or we talk about Ilchot Pesach, so we say that porcelain or earth will, mm -hmm. it's only obs ob absorbed and not dissolved. Right. Dissolved. <coughs> so we said, if it's, you have a Klicheres, an earth will, vessel, you cannot tovel, you cannot duck it in a mikveh. You can't purify it. Can, you know why you cannot purify it? Because they said shvirato hitarato. To purify it, you have to break it. Right. Because it's only absorbed and not dissolved. Right. So, so he said... Absorbs of impurity, so you can't purify it because correct. you can't one of our people. Unlike other vessels. So mm -hmm. now we said umidras so now we question and from where do we derive that regard with impurity imparted by treating an earthware vessel is ritually pure 
that is not metamer, that is not carrying impurity to others. Amar Chizkiyah, Chizkiyah bring a source from Vayikra, from Book of Leviticus, chapter 15. The Amar Kra, in regards to the Zav, that line, they said, Ve'ish asher yiga b'mishkavo. They said, whoever touch in his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in the water and be impure until the evening. Leviticus 15. So what did they say here? Makish mishkavo lo, who juxtaposed his bed to himself. To himself meaning to zav himself. Mahu, the same way as the zav. It lay taharaba mikveh, which means that that zav can be purified mikveh. But wait a second, not everyone said that. You know, Tosfot disagree. He said zav purified in the ma'ayan, in the spring, you know, water, but not in the mikveh. But uh, anyway, they use it as a, as a term. So which means that he accepted to mat midras. Af mishkavo itle ta'araba mikveh. So, so too his bed is referring to a vessel that he has a possibility of purification in a ritual bath. Which means that earthware that you cannot purify in a mikveh, it's not under the category of mishkav and is not becoming pure with midras, with the stepping on. The Vey Rabbi Ishmael Tana. We study in the school of Rabbi Ishmael. Said in Leviticus 15, now we're speaking about the, the, uh, the uh, law of Nida. So the Torah said Leviticus 15, every bed on which she lies, all the days of her Zavai mission, so it's a, a pure impurification of a female, like Zav, but happened for female shall be for her like the bed of her nida, menstrual period which means now we are juxtaposing how makish mishkava la we compare zava to nida ma hi itla taraba mikve af mishkava name itle taraba mikve just as she has the possibility of purification in the ritual bed. The same here, a bed is referring here to a vessel that is a possibility to purification in the mikveh. La puke, what we excluded, said la puke klicheres and earthware. The late late Araba mikveh that you cannot purify her elsewhere in a mikveh and therefore is not part of the mishkav and is not becoming pure in a midras and 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 it's very clear here that that um, uh, we learn all of that uh, make it clear that uh, since it's not part of that. You cannot um, 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 using this hakesh to anything else. You have to focus on that. So here we talk about different vessels that you can purify in the mikveh. Mativ Rabbi Ila. So now Rabbi Ila ask from this upcoming brighter, and what he ask? He said, Mapatz bamet menayin. He said, from where is derived that a reed met become ritually impure from contact with what? With corpse, which means they do not have the Beit Kibul. One of the condition to make um, a, a vessels that made out of wood is to have to have a Beit Kibul, something that it's accepted. So here we don't have this Kabbalah Tumah, the ability to accepting. Um, uh, you should know that the small vessels, very small vessels, which we soon we ex uh, ex explain, it's, um, it's not become uh, impure uh, by the Zav in any form. 
So because of that, we try to compare it to small vessels. And how? Turn the page, 84b. Vedinhu. And he derived it to a din that we compare. Kal vachomer. Uma pachin ktanim. A small pe- peaches, a small vessels. That uh, it's uh, earthware vessels. That is used as a receptacle for liquid because you open this peach, it's a narrow, and make it, uh, you insert the, 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 uh, the fingers and you put it in. Uma pachim ktanim tehorim bezav. It's pure with the zav, tmeim bemet. However, these small peaches remain pure in the zav, but they become ritually impure in contact with the dead body. Mapats. A reed man, shetame bezav, that its contact impurity with the zav became impure, and it, therefore it's much more stringent. And no din shetame betumat met. So you're going to tell me that it's not going to be a um, ritually impure by 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 attaching to a dead body? And he concluded his question. He said. Ve'amai, and why? Why should the, the reed mat become impure? Ha late late araba mikveh, because it can, isn't that true that there's not have the possibility of purification in the mikveh? Now we should know, as I said many times, there are different category of echsher kabbalat tuma in order for something to accept impurity. Meaning, for example, any vessel that cannot become pure in a mikveh, so, so it's an issue. Is this bright that they say that it's become impure by midras? And it's a contradicted that we say that any earthware in the previous brighter that um, that you cannot purify it in the mikveh, it will not be um, tamei in midras. So Amar le Rabbi Hanina, Rabbi Hanina responded to Rabbi Ila and said, Shane atam, he said there, in the case of the mat, is different. Why? Ho'il ve'ika bemino. It is different because there is purification in other vessel of its kind, which means the other wooden vessels that are made from materials that grow from the earth so you can uh, purify them in a mikveh because as we said a wood doesn't have the bait kibul the, the acceptance so it will not become impure Amar lei so he responds and he said may God save us from this opinion that you tell me that by comparing um, Mishkav juxtaposed to Zav, so you mean to say that, that there's something that he lie, you can have a purification in Mikveh, but the wooden mat, that you will not be able to be purified in Mikveh, so it's different than the earthware vessel, <coughs> excuse me, that it will not become impure in a Midras, he said, Adraba, he said, quite the contrary, the opposite. Rachmana litzlan midadach didach. God of compassion and mercy from your opinion. Which means he go the opposite one. He said, there's no need for the Mishkav himself to be pure in the Mikveh. But any vessel that th- there are some subcategory of vessels that can purify the mikveh, it's all, already under the category of tumat midras, vetamamai. And what's the reason of this relevant? Why, why Rabbi Hanina said it? How do Rabbi Hanina learn that it's enough uh, uh, in, in the one category of vessels that you can purify it in a mikveh? He said, trei krei there are two psukim was written. One pasuk said in Vaikra in Leviticus 15, Ve'ish asher yigabe mishkavo, 
and whoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes. Uchtiv, and then it's written in the next one, they said, V'chol ha-mishkav ha-shishkav alav azav itma, and every bed of which a zav lies shall be impure. So what we learn? So it doesn't say the word mishkavo. So it means even vessel that you cannot purify in a mikveh, it's still becoming pure by the midras. That's what Rashi said. Hakitzad. So he said yesh bemino. If um, um, there is a purification in other vessel of its kind, afal gabdelet leitara b'mikveh, even though he cannot have the purification in mikveh. In Bemino, but the, op- the opposite way that if um, they are subject that to the impurity imparted by lying, so there is no purification, not a vessel of its kind. So basically, what we do, Makish Mishkavo, lo, we juxtapose his bed to himself, which means that any type of vessel that is not like him which means that cannot purify in a mikveh so it's not subject to impurity imparted by lying now bring the, the Rava bring another source for that and he said as follows Rava Amar Midras Kli Cheres Tahor I'm sorry we're going slow today because I want to make sure that everyone understand it in our very best Rava said Midras Kli Cheres Tahor he said that treating, treating an earthware vessel is ritually pure, is derived from here. Why? Because they said in Bamidbar, in the book of Numbers, chapter 19, they said, Vechol kli fatuach, asher en tzamid patilalav tameu. And any open vessel that does not have a sealed cover on it become impure. So what we understand from that, hat samid patilalav tahoru. If there is seal cover it, it's pure because the earthware is not becoming pure only from mitocho, from inside. So since they have this samid patil, a seal cover, so this basically make it like a partition from the impurity and avoiding the impurity to enter inside that domain. Therefore, mi lo askina. Thus, uh, we, we were not dealing with the case. What? De yachadinu leishto nida. Which means that the person were designated the vessel for use by his wife and she was the status of Nida. So she sat there while she was Nida. So you have to see the Peru Shri in a Tosfot here that have his own um, uh, differentiation between the two vessels, which means the earthware vessels that it's covered with a D type of sealed cover. Even the, the Nida set on this he all that is not become impure in the tent that you have a corpse but then you said Vekamar Rachmana and the Torah said Taho which means the Torah said clearly that it's ritually impure ritually pure I'm sorry so what what do you see that that, that nothing imparted from from Tum'ah from impurity and the earthware vessels with sealed cover is not subject to impurity from any source. Now we're going to a new subject. The Mishnah is from the tracted Kilaim. And the, now, just a word of introduction. The Torah forbids to um, plant a seed from a mixture, which means you're not allowed to have two different type of seed planted to make it a swan. It's called kilain. Now, the issue here, we differentiate between yenika, something that they 
to our understanding, use as a drinking or the resource from that versus Gdila, how they grow. So now the Mishnah said, Minayin, from where we learn, La Aruga Shehi Shisha Al Shisha Tfachim. From where we derive that the garden bed, that it's six by six handbreadth, Shezoim Betocha Chamisha Zeronim, that one may plant five different types of seed in it, Arbaa Al Arba Ruchot Shel Aruga. And he can put four types of land, plants on each of the four sides of the garden band, and one in the middle, and one in the middle of all of that. Shinemar, this bring a pasuk in Yeshayao. Kicha aretz to titimcha, for as the earth bring forth its growth, uchegana. And as a garden causes its seed to grow. So that sentence, the Radak explained, it speaks in allegorical way about the redemption of nation of Israel. And they said that the redemption of the nation of Israel is compared to the earth that bringing fruits, that when it's time of salvation, of redemption, the nation of Israel that almost lost their hope while they have the darkness of the exile, they will rejuvenate and they will renew the same way as the seed planted in the ground is as a process of decay and later on it bring out a beautiful tree or beautiful flowers or beautiful food. That's the same as nation of Israel as you see the story of Egypt and more that they have the process of decay while out of all of this darkness coming out the Geula. Zara lo ne'emar ela zeru eha They do not say it seed in singular but instead it seeds in plural which means that several seeds may be planted in small garden Later, the Gemara explained it in much, much clearer way. The Pnei Oshua is fascinating here, and I highly recommend you to, to visit the Pnei Oshua and to see his explanations. Anyway, before we go to Gemara, just a word of introduction. Tomorrow, Mitzvah Hashem, I'm planning to bring you some pictures. You have a plant, try to be illustrative as much as I can. You have a plant, and you have in the four different corner of that plan um, um, a different plan, a diff different type of seeds. So you own, let's say, you own a land, you own the several acres, and it's in a certain size. Now you take a part of that that is a six by six handbreadth, and you want to have different type of planting of seeds. So now we said as follows: How you do it? You have to take a distance of three handbreadth from each one. And here, when you're coming close by five to six, so they ask, my mashma, from where it is inferred that the verse referring to five types of seeds that you can put in the, this type of aruga of six by six, Amar of Yehuda, this is the pasuk. He says that said that the earth bring forth its growth, that is a five type of seeds, because they use the word Totsi Chad, Tzimcha Chad, Hareikan Tre, because the word bring forth, Totsi represent one. And then they use the word Tzimcha, its vegetation represents one so together we have two two type of seeds zeru eha its seeds in plural which is tre because it's written in plural it has to be more than one which means two total ha arba 
So now you learn that the total are four. Tatsmiach chad. Since they said cause to grow is one more, so that's implication, like in a remez, in a hinting way, ha chamisha. So you understand that they uh, all of these psukim applying that planting the seed in a single garden bed, the total can be five species of seed. So what we learn from here, the, so basically the whole subject of the uh, of the garden bed have, as far as I know, at least five different avenues. The garden that uh, go by Rabbeinu Hanan Elen Meiri, the one that go by the Tiferet Israel, the one that go by the Rambam, one by the Rosh, and one by the Geonim. So in Mitzvahem, Blinello, tomorrow we're going to elaborate, but it's uh, many different avenues because um, it's not clear at the first glance how do you re uh, allocate each one of them in the garden and not violating any Torah laws. In a sense of practical lachot, um, we can use the, um, the Rambam Sefer Tahara, Ilchot Kelim, but we can elaborate more than just the Rambam. So the basic idea is that there are three types of wagons, and the wagon in the shape of the throne like a chair is susceptible to impurity by the treating. A wagon in the shape of bed can become impure by meant of impurity imparted to the contact with the corpse. And the wagon made of stones cannot become ritually impure at all. That's what the Mishnah said. But I want to remind you our discussion, you see a lot of uh, halachot, such as a kohen that come around, even without attachment, um, what's the proper way when the, uh, someone needs to be in contact. So we explain, for example, when it's come to um, coffin, there are certain uh, categories that uh, uh, that uh, we have to have shalosh tevotem so the three type of chests the chest that opens on its side can become impure through impurity imparted by treaty and we said midras kli taho an earthware vessel that is not uh, receptible cannot become ritually impure even with impurity imparted by treating of a zav and we explain further the whole concept of earthware, it's only absor absorbed and not dissolved, and therefore you cannot do anything shvirato tarato, you have to break it. Tumat mapats, impurity of a reed mat, we learn by Torah law a mat made, by a, uh, made of rope, or reeds, or um, papyrus, or similar material, so it becomes impure through impurity imparted by treating of a Zav, someone who has a discharge. However, it's only rabbinic law that the reed mat can become impure from contact with the dead body. So that's, uh, we learned by the Kalvachoma, that's uh, Rambam Ilchot Kelim, chapter 23. We also started a little bit the Ilchot Kilaim, and we said, that's again, that's Rambam Ilchot Kilaim, chapter 4. Minayin la'aruga, it is permitted to plant up to five species of vegetables in a garden bed that is six by six hand breadth, as long as one plants each species along the various side of the bed with one row in the middle. And there is a distance of a hand breadth and a half between the species. So you don't mix them. And as we said, we need to elaborate the difference. For example, the Rosh have the idea of the four different locations, and you have the middle one, and then you have the Tiferet Israel that hold it in a very different way. So we need to see some picture and explanations how they, each of them hold, how you really plant it properly. In very general term, if they have Mekor Yenika, if they have the, the watering them, the source of water, the same source, underground, it's not the issue. The big issue is when it's used as a ready plan while it's a mixture. That's a different um, uh, concern.
Es Hashem.